Picture this, a man and a woman sitting across from each other at a restaurant. They order food for one another. They walk home at night, share the same taxi, and even the same hotel room. She cooks for him when he's sick, and he asks for her opinion regarding everything he writes, together seemingly enjoying each other's company, as if they're the only two people left in the world. And yet, they're not a couple. Sure, they're connected by romance, but not of their own. You see, they are two neighbors brought together by a secret, the affair of each other's spouses. A shared secret that seems to infect their new relationship with unspoken possibilities. A longing from two people, in the mood for love. Wong Kar Wai's poetic ruminations of two characters' unfulfilled desire. And today, it's the sixth addition to our Doom romance series. A beautiful atmospheric tale of 1960s Hong Kong. I would say spoilers ahead, but if you've been following this series, you know how things end. And this video is kindly sponsored by Surfshark, but more on that midway. We find Mr. Chow and Mrs. Chan looking for an apartment in Hong Kong, in a Shanghai community. They move in on the same day and exchange polite greetings that never go beyond neighborly pleasantries. A similarity they both endure is that their spouses are often absent, Mr. Chan being off on long business trips and Mrs. Chow, well, she's often working late, although at increasingly coincidental sus times, leaving our two protagonists by themselves, physically surrounded in a cramped apartment where there's always people coming and going, and yet they stay emotionally unnoticed, going about their daily lives from home to work and work to home, looping around their entrenched routines and offhandedly recognizing each other in passing glances, going up or down the stairs, both apart but equally sharing in domestic isolation, a trait paralleled in the characters of Bob and Charlotte from Lost in Translation, a movie that borrows this film's brooding sensibilities and that went on to inspire the introspective her. The difference being that Lost in Translation is about characters finding common ground in each other while being stuck in a foreign place. Instead, Mr. Chow and Mrs. Chan are stuck in a mundane routine. The way the movie is shot is meant to emphasize their monotonous situation. My purpose at first was to try to show this film in a repetitious way, like we repeat the music, the angle of a location, always the clock, always the corridor, always the staircase, because I want to show nothing changes except the emotions of these two persons. The use of the three main themes is the most notable example. Yumeji's violin-based theme is repeated seven times, while Nat King Cole's Aqueos Ojos Verdes and Quizás 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 each reappear on three occasions. Routine is indeed something they both share, but what really initiates their relationship is the discovery of their spouse's affair. Since their spouses aren't around to explain themselves, they curiously start bonding over their shared secret and try to reenact how they could have possibly started this relationship, exploring the hidden romance on their own, until they start sharing more than just their frustrations with the situation, but their grievances with their life stagnation. Slowly, this new partnership begins to take them out of their monotony. The stairs that were at first a symbol of their repetition is now a sign of a transition that is occurring a new secret that they start to share. Most of my films deal with people who are stuck in certain routines and habits that don't make them happy. They want to change, but they need something to push them. I think it's mostly love that causes them to break their routines and move on. <laughs> From the start, the characters establish that they will not be like their spouses, although there is something brewing between them, perhaps not physically, but they are managing to address each other's emotional vacancies. They continuously try to omit these emotions from themselves, their neighbors, and from us. This is why the scenes are set up as if they're being watched. We always wanted something in front of the camera because we wanted to create a feeling that the audience becomes one of the neighbors. They always observe these two people. It also shows that just like in the frame, there seems to be something in their lives separating and obstructing them, blocking the progression of the relationship. Out of focus, vague, 
but still present like a nagging thought at the back of their heads that can't seem to go away. A lack of privacy endemic to the time, place and cultural sense of community. The film is of and celebrates our Hong Kong world. In our world, there is no such thing as the Western concept of privacy, except as I think the film conceded, in the privacy of your own head. All you are and how you live is relevant to all around you, to society, to those you live with. So of course, keeping a secret or even showing an emotion is a very devious endeavor. Another limiter is their own self-restraint, stemming from their personal moral code and the fact that they're still married. Unlike the characters in Wong Kar Wai's past movies, these are mature adults that don't have the luxury of exploring their emotions, to leave everything behind and to start anew, to entertain a beautiful fantasy, no matter how tempting, and perhaps a symptom of their social and personal restraint, they can't seem to express what they feel, an inability to be truly straightforward. This is why it's more a tale of images and impressions than of what they say making this unspoken tension rise between them, creating a longing in their gestures, their walk and looks captured by their mirrors that show us the undeniable, what can no longer be hidden, that they are in fact now more like them. Restraint only fanned the flames of their desire, but we don't know to what degree they ultimately gave into it. Was it just reserved to the privacy of their minds, or might it have been omitted from us? Just like the neighbors, it's left up to our unrestricted colorful imagination. Now, if you're worried about your online privacy not staying omitted, well, you might be interested in getting a VPN like the one we use from Surfshark. Not only does it give you access to a lot of content from streaming services that would otherwise remain geolocked in other countries, but most importantly, it protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet and where you're connecting from keeping more than just unwanted nosy neighbors away, and adding to that peace of mind, even they don't log your information. There are a lot of VPNs out there, but we prefer using Surfshark because it's one of the fastest, well-reviewed, most affordable, and offers a slew of features. Not only does it work across all platforms, but you're not limited to the number of devices you can install it on. Use Surfshark Alert that lets you know if your information appears in a leaked database, or Surfshark Search to prevent ads or trackers to follow your searches. I could go on, but I recommend you look it up on your own. Go to surfshark.deals slash screened. If you use our promo code screened, you will get 83% off the regular price, which means for something like a couple of bucks a month, you can be fully protected. Plus, you'll get three months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you try it and you don't like it, you can simply cancel your subscription and get your money back. And now we return to the show. The withheld intimacy echoes beyond their residence in the cramped, gossipy apartment, as we are shown years later that they still hold on to their fleeting relationship, highlighting an interesting oxymoron about time. I think filmmaker and film critic Mark Cousins found the right quote that best encapsulates Wong Kar Wai's meditations on unfulfilled desire and its relationship with time in the movie's precursor Days of Being Wild. I always thought one minute flies by, but sometimes it really lingers on. Once a person pointed at his watch and said to me that because of that minute, he'd always remember me. It was so charming listening to that. But now, I look at my watch and tell myself that I have to forget this man, starting this very minute. In the Mood for Love is a continued exploration of the lingering moment that is hard to erase and difficult to escape. How an instant can be a while, and a while can last an instant. We see Wong Kar Wai play with the time the characters inhabit by slowing it down, making them follow the sensual waltz of Yumeji's theme, or the Latin ballads. The song lyrics kisas kisas kisas, adding to their ambiguity, or more abruptly, freezing them in time, an instant that can last a while. As if we're witnessing a dream or a memory, we try to create a film from our memories, and in our memories, everything moves much slower. The low angles are meant to be the director's perspective, or at least when he was much younger, growing up in this period of Hong Kong, watching the adults from a distance. An idealized, nostalgic and vibrant portrayal. My films are never about what Hong Kong is like, or anything approaching a realistic portrait, but what I think about Hong Kong and what I want it to be. 
That is a very special period, and I'm from that background, and I want to make a film like this, and I want to recreate that mood. That is why he puts so much attention to the details on the screen. Wong Kar Wai is using sensorial triggers, the rain, the smoke, the food, the music, the same way we are reminded by a memory, by smell, touch, sight, or sound. Our senses activate the recall, and we're back in that moment. This is how an instant can still have a hold on us, even more so when it involves a powerful emotion like love, no matter how fleeting. We then advance in time a bit jarringly so to the documentary footage of the 1966 visit of the President Charles de Gaulle to Cambodia, sobering us up and ending the dreamlike state, signaling that time has passed and historic and personal change has occurred to the characters. Mr. Chow is now alone, visiting the Angkor Wat temple, far removed from the events in Hong Kong. His actions recalling a previous conversation, detailing that in the old times when someone had a secret they didn't want to share, they would find a tree, carve a hole, and whisper the secret, then cover it so it would stay there forever, hopefully exercising himself from the memory that has haunted him until now. Unlike the past movies in this Doom romance series, you could feel the stories were initially inspired by someone specific, but here you can gather that Wong Kar Wai is not referring to a person, but most importantly, a moment. At first we thought that we were making a story about two people sharing a secret. Later I realized it's more about a certain period that has been lost than about a marriage and affairs, a place, a time. Like mentioned before, trying to recapture a memory. His romance and regret are of a bygone era, the time he grew up in, that was so special and formative to him, and that he keeps revisiting in different ways in his movies. A Hong Kong that has already changed several times over, but that he can't forget. The stubbornness of a moment, a persistent muse. As Mr. Chow entrusts his secret to a hole in a stone wall and covers it up, adding to the many monuments to the past, Wong Kar Wai whispers his in this artificial memory. Perhaps not the real thing, but an undeniable mood. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. We have a channel announcement coming soon. We are currently working on starting the Screen Film Club in March, so stay tuned for more information on what that will entail. We invite you to like, share, and subscribe so this channel can keep growing and reach more people. This melancholic music was made by Eduardo Gonzalez. If you like what you heard, check his information down in the description. Until next time.